So when it comes to creating your own garden, like here at Unfiltered Gamer, we do every day. In fact, during the season, Grant and I like to go outside and create our own beautiful plants. Generally speaking, they're gonna be squash and asparagus, vegetables and fruits, but we do have on the other side of the yard, flowers and a whole lot of them. And what do I like more than just simply planting flowers? Playing games with flowers in them. In fact, this one over here is a game all about creating your own garden. And just like any garden, you're gonna need a lot of sunlight, a whole lot of water, a whole lot of love, and a little bit of strategy to make sure your plants grow. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game Garden Bow. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Garten Bow. And it is by Fisher Heaton and Tantrum Games. Well, why? Because Will Meadows from Tantrum House did the artwork for this, made by David Abelson and Alex Johns. And it's basically about how does your garden grow? It is a garden builder game, similar to a city building game and tile placement game, in which two to four players for about 45 minutes ages, I'd say 10 and up, will be placing down their seedlings and then flowers and then their larger flowers on top, trying to basically complete their garden. You'll be scoring points as you do this, going from round to round, taking actions. There's four different actions of the game, whether you're drafting certain things, pulling them from certain areas, and accomplishing what is required to accomplish on each of the different garden spaces that you'll be placing. You'll be also placing cards or tiles on top of other tiles, securing points for, for victory points until the end of the game. After somebody's placed down four of their larger tiles, that will signify the end of the game, and everybody's going to finish the round and tally up the points. Or, if all of the seedlings get run out from the deck, that will also signify by the end of the game, in which case players will tally up all the points that they see above on their tableau, and the person with the most points is the winner of Gartenbau. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the game and everything included. So here we have Gartenbau and everything included in the game, except for those three pieces that have been included since I uh, got this, and they're basically uh, tokens that you can utilize throughout the game. One's a wheel wheelbarrow, which will allow you to pick certain tiles from the board, um, as a free action as opposed to having to spend either sunshine and water to get to them. Another one is going to allow you to organize your tableau either by swapping two of your uh, little seedling tiles here or moving one to a, a, a location that's allowed. And then the final one is going to allow you to remove all of the flowers from the board and place down new ones. These are excellent things that are added to the game, but of course I don't have them, so I'm just signifying them with some dice that I'll go put, put back in the dice jar now. Uh, but what you do see here is the whole game of Garden Battle. And as you can see, you're going to have flowers, and these are the cards you're going to be drafting, and you're going to end up having five of them when it's your turn to start the game. You'll be choosing five resources, uh, either water or sunlight or a mix of both, and then you're also going to get one random seedling that you're going to place in front of you for your starting tableau. Not only that, but you're going to set aside any of the extra little flowers that you're going to get here. In addition, there is the seedling deck. You're going to shuffle that deck up and you're going to deal out five of them. And you're going to put them from left to right. The right side is the one that's going to start off as free. And then the more expensive ones will get closer to the deck. It's all random though, so you never know what's going to pop out. Finally, up here are you going to have these, uh, I guess they're called plants. Uh, these plants are what you're going to be placing on top of seedlings, provided you can pay for them. And there's a currency requirement up at the top there. There's how many victory points they're worth if they're on top, up top of your tableau at the end of the game. And then what you can place um, them on as far as the seedlings go. And then after that, you can also place the flowers on top of here. But that's pretty much what you're getting in the game. Three different types of tiles that you'll be stacking on top of each other or basically formulating your own garden in this garden growing game. Anyway, let's go ahead and show you a couple rounds. So here we have Garden Bow and it's set up for three players like I'd shown you previously. Everybody has chosen their five resources and there's a resource pool over here. Another thing I didn't note before, but it's pretty simple. You're going to place these, uh, different victory points in order from three, two, three, four, five, and finally six. So as you gain these guys, they start uh, basically requiring more and more and giving you more and more victory points. Um, and you're also gonna have these that you're gonna take from the top of the seedling deck to start the game. Another thing to note is you're going to be doing drafting and drafting is a little bit different in this game. In drafting, normally you're gonna draw a card and you're gonna pass it clockwise and then another player um, will, will also do the same thing and you'll go from one to two to three to four all the way to five cards. This way works pretty much the same way, 
but with an interesting twist. Everybody's going to look at their hand of five flowers. They're going to choose one, and then they're going to go ahead and pass clockwise. So this guy will pass this way, this guy will pass this way, and this guy will pass this way. Then everybody's going to take those cards back into their hand, and now they're going to choose two. So they can choose their same one, or they can choose two new ones, in which case maybe they want to keep the same one or not. That'll be up to them. And then they're going to go ahead and pass clockwise once again. And then finally, uh, uh, continuously, they're going to go, okay, now they, they're going to go for three. So they're going to look at their hand and choose three cards now. Maybe they want to keep their two and just add a new one, or maybe they actually want to switch it up and add three new ones. Until eventually, everybody's going to get five flowers. So that is kind of how drafting works in this game. Then afterwards, whoever was the first person to grow something, or, or whoever has a garden, will get to go first in some way. Make sure you get rid of all the extra flowers, and also don't reveal them. They're going to be secret and set aside for the rest of the game, which will come out next game probably. In which case, we'll go ahead and start with this guy here. And there's four actions you can do in this game. The first one is collect resources. So you have sunlight and water. Water is blue, sunlight is yellow. You can take three, but you can't take three of the same type. So I couldn't take three sunlight if I wanted to. I'd have to take two sunlight and a water as my action. So we'll just go ahead and do that for this guy to show you it's an action you can take. Then this guy over here, he can choose to take a card from this seedling row here. If he wants this one, it's free. You can go ahead and take it and place it in any viable location as long as it is connected. He can't do it something like this, but he could do something like this or something like this, basically making sure that all of them are going to be squared eventually here. If he didn't want that one, he can go ahead and take any of these, but it's going to cost him a research for e resource for each one he doesn't take. So for instance, if he wants this one here, he'll have to place one of his resources there, and then he'll be able to take this one here. And he can go ahead and place it however he wants. After that, these guys are all going to slide down, and a new seedling is going to pop up from the top of the deck. Then it'll be this guy's turn over here. Now this guy, of course, could go ahead and do the same thing, which is to gather resources or take one of these, but there's two other things that he can do. But unfortunately, at the beginning of the game, you're not really able to do those things. One of them is playing his flowers, and they have requirements. So for instance, to place this one, you're going to need to place it on two orange plants, these guys here, so underneath them is going to have two little plants here. So we'll go ahead and speed up the game a little bit to make to show you how it's going to look, basically. Uh, let's go ahead and say he has this, and he actually started with this one here. That way it'll make it easier. So we'll, let's go ahead and give him an action now. This is technically his second action if he had this one to start, but he can go ahead and purchase this one if he wants. To purchase them is going to be a cost on the top left and the top right of the card. This says one water and one sun. He'd put that into the bank. He'd take this, and then he'd place it where it says he can place it. In this case, it just says two blue. So we have to place it on top of two blue, which will work. And remember, you have to look at his hands. So in this case, he could... Um, this is good. This will get this. If he places this here, he just needs one more blue one down below. But in this case, he doesn't have a flower that is going to have an orange and a blue, so he can't actually do something something with this one, unfortunately. But that is one of the actions you can take. And like I said, the final action is taking one of these flowers and placing it down on top of two plants. So let's just pretend like these are two blue and that one was played there, he could then, of course, for his action, place this on top. That's going to give him 24 victory points at the end of the game. So those are basically the actions you can take in this game. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and just put this back, I guess, at the bottom of the deck. So he did his first action resources. He did his second action, which is taking one of these and placing it. And then he just had this one to start, so he bought this blue flower and placed it just like that. Now we'll go back to this player here. He can go ahead and take this if he wants. Maybe he'll place it like that. He'll gain this resource, and then these are all going to slide down again. And a new one is going to pop up here just like that. Ooh, a lot of seedlings falling. Then this guy here, what does he want? Maybe he wants to take one of these orange ones. He'll do that. He'll spend his two resources, a light and a water. He'll place this just like that. Victory points. Now he's kind of out of options. He has to take one of these things here. And he has to look in his hand and see what he needs to do. He's got a blue and he's got purple. So maybe a blue and a purple is what he's going to go for. So he'll take this purple when it's free, place it like that, and then he'll slide these along just like that. See how the game's progressing and see how our garden is growing? <laughs> and the next player's going to have a chance. Maybe he wants this red one here. That's going to cost two sunlight. He's going to go ahead and place it just like that. The next player is going to have their opportunity, looking at what the cards they have in their hand. They have orange and a yellow. So maybe we're going for a yellow, but there's no yellow here, unfortunately. So they could, if they wanted, spend one of their tokens to remove all of these. That could be useful. Or maybe instead he has an orange and a red as well. So he can go ahead and take 
this one over here and place it just like that. Moving these guys down once again, just like that. And then the next guy's going to get his chance to go. Remember, he's looking for purples and blues right now, but there's he's already got his blue down, and we just lost the purple to this guy here. So now we're in kind of a pickle. So he's going to probably try and have to build something else. And maybe he'll go for green. No, he doesn't have any green ones here. So in which case, maybe he'll just build another blue for his double blue here, I suppose. He can go ahead and take this one just like that and uh, place it like that. And the game's going to continue going like that until eventually the flowers, four flowers have been placed or this deck runs out. In which case, you're just going to tally up the points on the board and whoever has the most is the winner. It's simple how points work. These are going to be valued at two points and then the flowers are going to have their own unique value. Some of them are going to be a base value. Let me go ahead and see if I can find one for you. Like this is 24 points. Others are going to say stuff like, oh, 10 points plus, this is supposed to be a plus, a misprint. Two points for every orange seedling and orange flower or orange plant you have on the board as well. And they all have different like requirements as to what you're gonna gain points with. And then whoever has the most in the game garden bow, as far as points goes, is the winner of the game. All right, I think you get an idea of how it works. The last thing I have to say is as you buy these things out, they're gonna be more expensive as far as costs go. This is only a two and a one, but this one here is a three and a one. However, it gives you more victory points. All right, let's come up. Caveats, caveats, as always caveats. One of them being, of course, when you make plants, you can go, you're gonna purchase them from the top, but at the bottom, it tells you what you need in order to place these on top of your seedlings. Usually at the beginning of the game, for an orange one, you can use two orange for a blue you can use two blue but for certain ones you'll actually be able to use two other colors like for an orange you can use a red and a yellow so placement really matters in this game in fact i think i placed poorly during this example of play because i could have probably put a purple down especially if you only need a red and a blue one for this specific purple to begin with but nevertheless i think you get the idea as far as how you're going to be building your gardens seedling plant then flower four flowers game ends after that round score points Flowers are going to have different point ratios on them, and there's a, a ton of different types of flowers that do a ton of different things as far as how points are scored. So building your garden is going to be based on the flowers that you get in the game. This is the most important aspect of the game, in my opinion, because you need to draft to make sure you get the best flowers that kind of communicate with each other in the best way possible. If you have a bunch of flowers that will help you along the way by either giving you flat points or maybe you try to get a bunch of them that require reds or you know some of them that require certain things like you can kind of combo them as far as getting points. Well, this one requires sides and this one requires corners. That can score me double points when I have both these flowers out, so on and so forth. I think you get the idea of that though. But that's pretty much it as far as that go. Placement matters is basically what I'm saying. Now, my review of the game. This game is really cool. I'm starting to love tile placement and the city building and or garden building aspect of games. I like building mechanics in general, and this one has a lot of strategy. You're basically watching those seedlings as they come out and pulling the ones you need, pulling ones you don't need. One of my critiques actually originally was the fact that you couldn't really wash the board and you start spending a lot of resources for certain seedlings that you really didn't necessarily want, but that was the only available option. But with these new tokens, that's really, really cool. I actually gotta play that with that, utilizing them, washing the board or changing the way your flowers part work. But if you don't wanna use those tokens, it's great too, because they can score you victory points at the end of the game, which is the equivalent of basically two, three points or zero for the, uh, for one other one. They, they have different point ratios as to how you're going to score them at the end of the game if you haven't used them. Uh, but that's nice as well, nice added bonus. The game's fun. I really enjoy playing this game and the strategic component is definitely my favorite. The drafting is an interesting little twist on drafting and then throwing in the tile placement world building has a nice little twitch, twist as well. Uh, as far as how the tiles come out and grabbing them and when you're gonna grab them, you're always gonna be watching your opponents. What flowers are they likely trying to build based on the flowers that are left that you saw in the draft? Can you hate draft against them? Absolutely. So there's a little bit of that going on, but not as much as most drafting games have. Sometimes you'll just know what they have and you'll be like, well, I could stop them, but then I won't get to make my plant and in turn, it might score me less points. So you might focus on yourself more than you're gonna focus on hurting your neighbors, which is nicer for me. I don't mind a little bit of take that in these kind of games or a little bit of aggressive maneuvers as some people would call it uh, in these kind of games, but I don't want them to be fully like that. And this one doesn't do that, which is nice. It's just basically focusing on growing your garden. And when you have an opportunity to do nothing but mess with your neighbor, you can do that as well. Overall, it's a really solid game. It works pretty cool as well. I like the abstract feel of it, but yet it still feels like you're 
you're building a garden. So it has that theme attached to all the beautiful colors and whatnot. And everybody's garden is gonna look different based on the flowers they're trying to place down. Sometimes you're gonna see a large tableau of all the different seedlings played everywhere, score view points. And sometimes it's gonna be all tight niched and you're just trying to place as many little flowers, as you, big flowers as you can in the smallest area possible. It really just depends on what you're getting though. Overall, it's a really fun game. If you like tile placement, city building, world building style games, you're gonna dig this one with a little bit of an abstract feel and a little twist on the drafting nature as well. Definitely check out Garden Bow if you're interested down below on Kickstarter, David Abelson and Alex Johns. Really, really cool game. Um, I like the artwork. All good. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Outro time. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out our other videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at Garden Bow down below in the description, currently on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Get tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game Dogs right now, so if you want to pick up that game, you can go ahead and do so on our website, but not my dog, the, the game dogs. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They give away a ton of great games. They have a great list of content and blogs and other great stuff on their website, even more than my own. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to garden bowing with you next time.